A few weeks ago, I was asked to do a layout tour, and I've reached a point with my North Canyon that I can take a break from that and move on to something else. So it seems like a good time for a tour. It hasn't been all smooth sailing with the layout. I've had a couple false starts. You know, initially when I started the project, I worked on it for a while, and I put it down for quite a while. Then I worked on it a little bit more, put it down again. And over that period of time of, you know, three years plus, I got very little done. Then about three years ago, I had to make a decision. I'm either going to build the layout or I need to just tear it all out and forget about doing the hobby. That was pretty much a coin flip in my mind what to do. I could have went either way. But I decided, well, I want to build the layout. And so for the last three years, I've worked pretty steady on it. And I've made a lot of progress in the last three years. A little bit of background for me in the hobby is really there isn't much. About a year before I retired, seven years ago, a young guy at work was into the hobby. He was an end scaler. And I was thinking about something that I could do that would be a fun hobby once I aged out of classic cars. I've been doing the classic car hobby my entire life, but I'm getting to a point where I'm not going to be doing restorations anymore. It's just getting too difficult. I'm just getting too old for it. So I needed something else. My layout is 20 feet along the back wall. It's 12 feet across this end. And it's 7 feet across this end. Now these doors go into my house and I built this room as an addition to my house. I guess you could consider it a back porch. But I needed access here to the outside. And this is the only access from my house to my backyard. So this is a pretty high traffic area and I needed to have space to get in and out. So that's why it's only seven feet across on this end. I wanted the bench work to be attractive because this is a high traffic area going in and out to the backyard. So I have an MDF base here on the peninsula and then all my bench work has fascia. And then I also built a valance to give the model railroad a little bit of a, a shadow box look. And I thought it would make it more attractive. But it also helps me with my lighting. Now I have three strips of LED lights under the valance in all areas of the layout. I have one central strip and then two outer strips. And I have the outer strips positioned so that my buildings and my trains won't cast shadows on the backdrop. I thought that would kind of spoil the immersion if my buildings or trains are casting shadows on my backdrops that are supposed to be you know distant views. I designed my track plan using Extract CAD which is a free download and for me that really did everything I needed it to do. My layout is a rail fan layout and I want it to be a diorama layout I think one of the most famous or well-known 
layouts of what I would like to do would be the George Celios Franklin and South Manchester where I don't think George operates that layout I think it's mostly a diorama with trains running through it and that's pretty much my goal that's what I want to do I want to have a nicely scenic layout and just run trains on it when designing my track plan I wanted to have some visual interest so that if I did video or photos that I would have some interesting locations on the layout and for instance this canyon as the train snakes down in the canyon you know once this is fully scenic I think it would probably look all right I pre-ordered a couple scale trains tunnel motors so I'm going to need a tunnel on my main line. So I have this portal set in place and then obviously this pink foam is not finished. So what I'll do is I'll build up a tunnel in this area. And I can stand back here and a train can enter and the last car could go past this point on this mountain here without the locomotive coming out the end here so I can hide the train for a short period of time and it kind of breaks it up where the train will disappear here before it comes out here. One thing my layout had to have was some bridges and so that was an important scenic element that I wanted in my railroad. And what I've done is my main line starting about here goes up at 2% all the way to the midpoint of the railroad and then declines by 2%. The city track is at zero elevation. Now this bridge right here, that's where the main line peaks and then it descends at 2% after that. Until it reaches this point right here where it's at zero elevation. And it continues at zero elevation until about right here where it starts going up the incline again. Now a problem with having no prior experience is I have no experience. So if I were to do this again instead of having the incline all the way around the layout what I would do is just drop the bench work where I wanted my bridges and then I could run my mainline train at zero elevation for at least most of the circuit. The exception is the North Canyon where you can see the canyon floor is lower than the bench height and that's almost by accident because I had built a model railroad diorama and I wanted to integrate it into my bench work and it had a canyon and so I did, I built it into my bench work <laughs> I ended up scrapping everything but the actual wood itself so that's why this area has a lower floor than the rest of the layout. My DCC system is Digitrax I have a 
20 amp power supply. I have a DCS 200 command station. And you can see I have a couple panels and I have another one right here. I have a DB150 booster here. And I was given that by another model railroader who switched to NCE and so he gave me his Digitrack system. I don't need that because my track footage doesn't really require it but since I had it I went ahead and put it in. My layout is broken into three circuits and each circuit is on a breaker. I strung about 800 feet of wire underneath my bench work. So it took a little bit of time to wire it up. I was very meticulous with my track. I wanted to have reliable performance, and I have. And one thing I added to my track for expansion gaps. Now my train room here is not temperature controlled all the time. I only have the AC or heat running when I'm in the room. So temperatures can fluctuate quite a bit, about 40 degrees. In the summertime, this room and the peak of the summer can get up to about 105 degrees and in the winter time it could get as cold as 60 degrees so I have to have expansion gaps for my track the track will expand or contract depending on the temperature of the room and I have these expansion gaps about every five feet and it's worked really well. My track has been absolutely flawless. It's performed perfectly. And so I took the time to make sure my track was as good as I could make it. I have the expansion gaps in it. I have circuit breakers. I have it broken into three circuits. And it just performs really well. All of the turnout frogs are powered. And these are powered through tortoise machines. So I don't want any stalled locomotives when I'm running my trains. And to me, this is just part of having good, reliable track. Now my lift out section here has a Walther's double crossover and this allows the trains to go into or out of the city section of the layout. Now all four frogs on the double crossover are powered. I have the lift out section powered by a two wire plug and I control the switches using blue point switch machines. And small rods right here. I need to put some knobs on these because I poke myself occasionally. Now the track is anchored here with PC board strips. So the track is soldered to these PC board strips. And that makes sure my alignment is perfect. Every time I remove the lift out section and reinstall it, I get perfect alignment with my track. Now originally with the lift out section I had clamps 
to clamp it in place, but I removed those clamps. They weren't necessary. And now it's, it's just held in place by gravity, and it works great. My first piece of model railroading was actually my display cabinet for my locomotives. And I scratch built this cabinet while I was finishing the interior of the room. Each of the shelves has a piece of track. And so that was my first experience with laying track and applying ballast. And you can see the it's a lot of empty spots in the cabinet. I sold off a bunch of my locomotives and actually there are three in here that are going to be sold off. I have seven locomotives on pre-order so I'll get a few more in there eventually. But I have a stereo system in the room and I have a Samsung notepad. I have about 15,000 songs on it and about 250 audiobooks. So depending on my mood, I'll either listen to an audiobook or listen to music and then I just run it through this amplifier. When I built the room, I installed a PTAC unit which is essentially a air conditioner and heater that they use in motel rooms. It's a little oversized for the room, but it works pretty good. I had some issues with it earlier this year, but it's been working great all summer. I have a small modeling table in the room, and I have some lighting to help me see what I'm doing, and I also have a magnifier here. It really helps me see what I'm doing. My eyesight's not that great. There we go. I got LED lighting. I have some of my paints out here right now because I've been working on the bridges for the North Canyon. And I have a bunch of Walther's kits. Now I have more than I need, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to use, so I'll build what I need and what's left over. Well, I'll probably head to the swap meet or eBay. I have my small airbrush compressor there. Now I bought these JTT pine trees when Scenic Express had a sale. Now they're not they're not great trees. I'll use them, but I'll probably use them in a background application when I get to the point where I'm putting greenery on the layout. This pink foam is just set in place. I need to have it removable until I get all the rock work done along this inside of the track. So I'll have to get up underneath here. to work on all the rock work, do the painting and all that. Once all that's done, then I can finish this, get the tunnel built, get it permanently installed, and finish it. Is my layout perfect? No. Is my track plan perfect? No. You know, if I had to do it over again, I would make some changes. And I do have some changes planned. One planned change is this fascia. I don't really like it. So what I plan to do is I'm going to take the bench work and move it out in this area. Then I'm going to wrap these rocks around and bring rocks down. 
And the same goes for this side. I want to bring the rocks out around. And so the fascia will be cut more horizontally back to this point. And I'll have a rock face here. Another thing I want to do is add a third track here. Now if I install this track with a two inch spacing, well then the track is right out against the edge of the bench work. So what I plan to do is extend the bench work two inches to give me a little bit of space here between the edge of the track and the edge of the bench work. So I'll add this Atlas Custom Line number six turnout here and that'll give me access to this third track. When I initially wired up my turnouts I had each turnout on its own switch. Now one of you guys suggested to me that I pair up the, the turnouts to one switch because for instance this turnout and this turnout both have to be thrown. So I took that advice and that's what I did. And so you see I have holes here where additional switches were because I paired up two turnouts to one switch. So what I'll do in the future once I get my house remodel done is I'll get my 3D printer going and I'll print up some plugs for these holes. And I'll do the same thing for this side. So two of these switches will go away as I pair up, pair up these number fours. I've used Atlas Code 83 Flex Track and Atlas Custom Line Turnouts throughout the layout. Now if I had to do it over, I would probably choose something different simply to get greater detail but the track has worked perfectly, so I have no complaints about it as far as that goes. But the level of detail could be better. Something I wanted to do with my original track plan was I have this turnout here. and I have this track leading around and ending at the end of my bench work and what I planned to do was put in a piece of shelf layout here and then connect the two pieces with the lift out section and my thought was well I could build some trains over here and then run them on and off the layout. A limitation with that is this is only six feet long so I'm not going to build any big trains. And another limitation is even if I modified the end of the bench work here, I would still have a 44 inch lift out section, which is pretty long. And if I followed through with that and I decided to do that, I would take all this track out. Where I have double track here with a bunch of turnouts, I would get rid of these two turnouts, I would get rid of this turnout, and I would just run it all single track. So that's something I could do in the future. I suppose it would have some value even if the shelf was only six foot long, it would have some value. But I haven't decided. I could go either way. I could go ahead and do that or I could just take it all out and not do it at all. Something I've been considering as a change to my track plan is my main line peaks right here and after this it descends at 2% down to here where it gets down to zero elevation. Now what I've been thinking is I could run this at six and a half inches 
run it at zero grade all the way back into the corner and then have a two turn helix here. And I could have the helix, helix exit here down at my 50 inch benchwork height. I think that would be pretty nice where I'm coming in to this area at six and a half inches and then I exit out at 50 inches with zero elevation on this run. The problem is I would be limited to a 24 inch radius helix and I think that might be problematic and one thing I do not want is issues with my track so I probably won't do that simply because the helix radius would be too small but it's something I would like to do so the layout still has a long ways to go there's a lot of work ahead of me it's going to take years to get this finished hopefully I live long enough I do really enjoy the hobby and I enjoy the modeling and I enjoy just running the trains I would like to do a little bit of operations on my layout it'll be limited but I'll see you know how that works out once I get all the structures in place and speaking of structures I think I'll do a part two to the layout tour and we'll talk about structures. But I'll end this one here. I want to thank you for watching. And I hope you come back for part two. And let's kind of finish up this layout tour. Thanks again for watching.